Alright, welcome back to Pajama Sam's Lost and Found, everybody. We are having a super time. We've cleared the first 20 levels. They've all been kind of very boring and kind of not fun, but... I've heard the next 20 levels will be a bit different. Oh, sure enough! Doing, King? Just fine, thanks. What can I do for you? I'm looking for some missing things. Can you help me find them? I'd be happy to. Oh, yes! We get to play in Kane. Uh-oh. <laughs> Yes, I've been. I've, I like Kane. <laughs> yes, I know. It's so exciting that you did. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> I've never heard of a joke before, actually, no. <laughs> Good night, Metal Lord. Thanks for joining in. Yeah, no, I don't really like playing the bonus games, to be honest. <laughs> They're not that fun. <laughs> Clearly not, R.S., because you're taking that seriously. I at least appreciate the change of scenery, literally. I literally didn't even see that there. That just boy. Respawning is like you want to immediately dash into it. It's like, no. Well, too bad. Like, I did not even register that that was an obstacle. I thought it was part of the background. Which means the backgrounds are just too detailed. Oh, yes, my teddy bear. I was wondering where that was. Yeah, it seems like this game just kind of reuses the music from the other Pajama Sam games. Well, I think thus far the King levels seem more fun than the Auto ones, even though they're like the exact same. And have a good night, Dust. Woo! Not that I want to use it for anything. I am glad that there are only a hundred levels. Uh, this, again, my mind was just like, that's just part of the level. Ah! Stop making me go immediately into it again. Okay, if it's purple, then don't touch it. Yes, I know, and, I'm, and we are so grateful to you too, Sam. I'm not even bothered with the spinning. The spinning just, like, doesn't work, man. Here we go. I think... Ouch. Maybe what would have worked better for this game is, like, instead of every 20 levels you change who you're riding in, maybe, like, every 5 levels, just spice up the game a little bit. Okay, I don't like being right next to that screen. <laughs> Unless I know it's the end of the level. Remember, we still need to get all of the high score slots filled. Uh, what? That is an evil jerk thing to do. I'm kind of amazed I was able to get through that. No. No. No! I'm like freaking A! <laughs> the spinning screwed me up. And so did the fact that I have to play in windowed mode. We're getting deeper into the mines. I like the scenery here. It's very nice. I f yeah, I feel like Kane and Otto should have returned in new... In the at least the Pajama Sam games, I know Otto had like a very brief cameo in the second game. Kane was a great character in the first though. <laughs> Kane looks so disappointed in me whenever we lose. He's like, really? <laughs> Son, I'm disappointed. I 
Oh, is the, is the, like, railroad crossing sign not an obstacle? It really seems like it should be. I love how Pajama Sam has only really lost green game pieces that have numbers on them. And then it's like, oh, I also lost, like, a single teddy bear in this world. Half the time when I pick up the bonus puzzle piece, I don't even see the bonus puzzle piece on the screen. The background is changing on every level, whereas I feel like in the auto levels, it was the same background all the time. Yikes. Oh boy. We gotta find Rex, we gotta find our t-shirt, our paintbrush, and our teddy bear. It's very important. Maybe I'm just getting better at the game, but I feel like this world doesn't seem as difficult as the last uh, one. Oh, I hate how big the hitboxes on stuff are, though. Can I get a 1-up for getting to 50,000 points? I would appreciate it. Of course, I might die before I can even reach that milestone. Oh boy. What?! Well, I guess we'll never know now. Oh, we beat Sans's high score, though. Fantastic. Uh... You know, it's fitting. Let's go with Kane. <laughs> Alright, let's try this one again. Giant Rock, maybe we should try spinning into it. I don't like using the spin, because it's very inconsistent, but... You know, it looked like it was too big to even jump over. Okay, so that's... The, so the railroad crossing side... Um, no part of me touched the bat. Yes, he did. Nope, spin didn't work. But I don't know if it's like this obstacle the spin just doesn't work on, or if it's a case... No, it was just a case of glitchy game mechanics. My favorite. I feel like the screen is too small. Like, Pajama Sam takes up half the screen, like a f or at least a third of the screen, all by himself. Like, there's not enough room to see. Oh, wow, we didn't even score for the high score. Like, either make Sam smaller or make the screen bigger. But right now, it's like, <laughs> there is not enough time to react. Wait, that is an obstacle? But it wasn't an obstacle that... <sighs> I give up trying to figure this game out. This game makes no sense. I did the spin there, and Pajama Sam didn't do the spin. The spin is so temperamental! It works sometimes, but not all the time. And on levels like this where you need to use the spin, really makes it annoying. Yikes. I'm sure you did, Pajamas. I'm Danger Falling Rock, eh? I'm not spinning on the bats, because I bet you need to spin on each one individually in order to make them go away. 
Wow, this is a long level. There we go! Yay! <laughs> Alright, here we go. Back into the mines! Oh. Oh, no! Now there are ceiling hazards. And we can't spin and then jump. Oh, no. It's an invincibility. Let's just move at max speed. Until it wears off, of course. Uh oh, no! You can't react in time because the screen is so small. Putt Putt is still here on the list, and we gotta knock him off. Uh, let's go with. <laughs> Mark it. <laughs> there we go. We just need to beat Putt Putt, and then everybody else is my high score. And that's what really matters. Okay, that cannot be spun into. You have to jump over those. I guess that's good to know. I duh! There's background and foreground, neither of which affect you, but the actual terrain blends in with the foreground. This is frustrating. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> big rock. There's no way you can jump over those big rocks. So you've just got to be ready to spin. Just like in Mario Galaxy. Alright. Oh, I love levels that give me an invincibility right at the start. <laughs> These are my favorite kind of levels, actually. Okay, what kind of person would give me a flight power-up right in front of a wall so you just instantly die when you pick it up? Are we sure they were designing a children's game when they made this? There are a bunch of humongous entertainment games where it's like, this is way too difficult to be geared towards children. Case in point, Bear Stormin'. And let's not forget the even tougher sequel, Circus Stormy. Which I don't think anyone has actually reached the end of before. Oh, you... Wow, what a jerk move to do. Wow, the hitboxes are... real, but they shouldn't be. Now I have to second-guess what I can actually spin into and what I can't. We did it. All right, last life! But we've beaten Putt Putt's high score. See, the spin didn't work on that one. I don't know why. And apparent- wait. I thought that was my last life. Did I get an extra life literally right before I died? What? Alright, have a good night, DX. I hope your next day is better than this one was. Whoa, 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 whoa! We may not like it, guys, but this is what peak game development and design is, looks like. Breath of the Wild 2 wishes it could be this good. There we go! Pup puts off the list! And with this, our new high score will be... Potter! <laughs> Potter! We just gotta beat ten more levels, and then we can end the stream. 
I want to go for one world per stream. I don't think that's unreasonable to ask. <laughs> yeah, no part of my minecart touched any part of that rock, but because it's a flat square hitbox, it don't work. There we go. I hope it's not just like, oh, you beat the Kane world, now you're back in auto again. Oh, you beat the auto world, now you're back in Kane. Like, I hope there's a bit more variety, even though, like, the gameplay is functionally identical. It would be cool to get some different environments. I found the deodorant that you were missing, Sam. Stupid rocks. <laughs> do, 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 do. I do love this music, though. The Steam reviews for Humongous Entertainment games can be kind of amusing. The ones for Puppet Enters the Parade and Puppet Goes to the Moon were amazing. Like, Puppet, en Puppet joins the parade, it's like, you get to mow lawns, 10 out of 10. One of them was reading into, like, the socioeconomic situations of the different parts of the game. <laughs> One of my favorite reviews was for Puppet Goes to the Moon, where someone's like, I downloaded this game because I thought it was going to be, like, Skyrim, but with guns. I wasn't disappointed. <laughs> In stark contrast to YouTube comments, Steam reviews actually can be very funny. Another one from the same game, Dark Souls for Children. <laughs> Honestly, Papa Goes to the Moon if you play Bear Storming is Dark Souls level difficulty. In a game geared for ages 3 to 5 or 3 to 8. Good job. What? What kind of fake difficulty is this? <laughs> this game got mostly positive reviews. I guarantee you right now, that is from people who are like the game purely for nostalgia. Now I say that, I am guilty of that too. Like, I fully admit that several of the games I love from my childhood, I only like because they were from my childhood and are not great games. Case in point, Balloonorama is not particularly great. But it was my childhood, so I like it. Boeen? Yikes! Now I will say though, one of those Humongous Entertainment games that has aged well, Maze Madness. Love that game. That was the peak of the Junior Arcades. Balloonorama is just positive. I think Balloonorama would have been a lot better if it was, like, less than half the length. It had 120 levels when it probably should have just had 50. And instead... Like, if they had done the same game, but instead of every 10 levels it's a new world, it's every 5 levels it's a new world. And maybe offered some variety to the gameplay a bit, I think it would have been better received. At the very least, that game had a fantastic soundtrack. Uh oh. Ouch! They think Lost and Found is better than Balloonorama. Well, I mean, Lost and Found doesn't take as much time to finish. Provided that. 
the person who told me that there are a hundred levels is telling the truth. My experience with Balloonorama is like, the first couple worlds I'm like, this is really fun, this is great, I love this. And then you get to like world three or four and you're like, oh, there's, it's still going. And that's the when you realize that you're only like an eighth of the way through the game. Here we go, level 36. Oh look, we're in the mine again. What a shocker. Let's be honest, a lot of our... A lot of these childhood ed entertainment computer games are not great when you hold them. When <laughs> They don't really hold up. And the ones that do are the true legends. Like the free... Only free of Pajama Sam's uh, adventures outside of the junior arcade games. The Puppet games are good. Fatty Bear is amazing. The Spy Fox games are gems. It's not a spoiler. I already knew that there was 100 levels. Also, I figured there was only going to be 100 levels at the most. Most junior arcade games have 100 levels. Balloonorama has 120 randomly. Maze Madness only has 50, but the levels are a lot longer, so it makes sense. And then Sockworks has, like, several hundred, but the levels are also really, really fast. And also, you need to play with the Cheater X code if you actually want to play them all. Yeah, we're making better progress now. Only three more levels in the mine. Whoa. Boing! I also have never played either of the Spy Fox Jr. arcade games. Uh, Cheese Chase and Hold the Mustard. I have a feeling they might end up like this, where I'm like, I bet they were great at the time, but probably don't hold up. I've also heard those get very hard as well. Boing! You'd think they could have had, like, more than one voice clip for when you pick up the bonus puzzle piece. <laughs> Don't think it would have taken that much more effort. Oh man. Is this the best score we've gotten thus far? We've, we broke 100k for the highest score. Guys, when we enter our high score, what do we enter it as? Normally I was going to put Tim there, but I think we've beaten Tim's record just like we do in Frogger, he's back. <laughs> Rats. Okay, actually, I want to try something. If we actually spin into the bats, does it is it one at a time? No, we kill the whole group. Oh, I love the invincibility power-up. I, I like it almost as much as I love Super Pep and Balloonorama. Super Pep from Balloonorama, I'm just like, this is what the game, how the game is supposed to be played. <laughs> what? <laughs> it has to be a five-letter name. Oh no. Not like this. Danger, falling rock. Look at that one was two groups of bats. They're getting sneaky. Alright, let's see if we can beat the final level without having a game over. Final level in the mines.
It's the most exciting thing that ever happened. I'm, yeah, I'm sure you did. Danger, falling rocks. <laughs> there are bats instead. I'm glad it wasn't just like stalagmites out of nowhere. Or stalactites. Stalactites hang from the ceiling. Stalagmites try with all of their might to reach up to the ceiling, but they never actually do. Yeah! Alright, so normally I would end the stream here, but I, I want to keep going to get that high score. Once n Next time we have the game over, that's when we end the stream, but let's keep going. Wacky! Whoa, where in the world am I? You're way up by the North Pole! I don't know how they got here, but I know some of my things are around somewhere. I'd be happy to help you if you need. My name's Rosie, by the way. Thanks. I'm Pajama Sam. I could definitely use the help. Okay, we're in the North Pole. Uh, Rosie is uh, definitely not a character I recognize. I picked up a like the graphics here, though. Very cute. I picked up a bonus <laughs> GG. It's not GG yet. You don't get to enter your high score unless you get have a game over. If I start playing really, really well, we might actually keep streaming for a while. Um, I didn't pick anything. You don't match five times, the game's over. Woohoo! I got a ball! Darn. Well, I came close. I did not click to do the bonus, but it made me do it anyways. <laughs> well, that was a funny sound effect. <laughs> that was worth it. Who's making ice pyramids out here? What civilization is this? Hello there! That sign is kind of creepy. There's just a road sign that says, Hello there, kids. What is this? Where have we... What What frozen hell have we ended up in here today? I picked up a bonus puzzle piece. Um, what on earth hit me? <laughs> okay. Look at that. Oh my gosh. We destroyed. We got more than double what Tim got. Okay. We need a five letter or less name for someone that's truly worthy of being at the top spot. Who could it be? Hmm. Let's see. Mm. There's obviously only one. <laughs> Goofy. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> okay, we could also go for brain. We can save Goofy for a different score. <laughs> You'll never beat Goofy's high score. <laughs> yeah. No, I think brain is the big brain play to do, though. Quite literally. All right, you know what? I had more fun with that this time around. I think World 2 was a lot more fun than World 1 was. And at this point, we are almost halfway through the game, so hey, we'll just keep on plugging. So 
I guess, unless I say otherwise, plan on me streaming Higurashi tomorrow at 8 uh, p.m., the usual time. And then I will not be streaming uh, Friday or Saturday. Sunday, if we have not finished up Higurashi, and I think we still have a lot to do left, we'll be streaming then as well. And then Monday, who knows. So, thanks for joining in, everybody. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your night, and God bless. Hope to see you next time.